Hi, my name is Shane. I'm a producer of Five News. I know, I know. So what, right? But there's something I've been wanting to share with y'all for a while that's been bugging me. It's about the music scene, y'all. Come on. The music scene, you ask? Yes, the music scene. That's because it's not getting the recognition and respect it deserves. That's right, I said it. How do I know? Because I've been doing it for 30 years and you know, I know a little bit. In fact, did you know there are over 40 famous musicians that come from Arkansas? From LeVon Helm to Ashley McBride, Arkansas has a rich history of musicianship. So, I thought it would be a good idea to document the music scene in our area. Actually, I'm not the only one that thinks it's important. You see this guy? His name is Joel. He's our chief photog, and he, like myself, is a musician and has been covering news in our area for over 20 years. This guy? He knows some people. And that's why I want you to join us as we shine the spotlight on what we like to call Five Country. We shine the spotlight on Randall Shreve. I really can't explain it. His music is so different and it, it touches your soul. When you hear Randall for the first time, I get so excited for people when I see them come to a restaurant or to a bar to see Randall for the first time. And they say, we've never heard of Randall. I said, be prepared. You're gonna have your mind blown. You've probably heard the name Randall Shreve. In fact, you've probably also heard the name Benjamin Del Shreve. Both brothers are music icons across five country in the region. But Randall, the youngest, has just released his sixth album. It's called Excessively Refined. But let's take a moment to get a little background on Randall Shreve. He was born in Shreveport, Louisiana on May 9th, 1978. And after moving around for a while, his family eventually ended up in Hatfield, which is in South Arkansas. And that's where he would remain until high school graduation. Randall was given his first instrument, a drum set, when he was nine. And that was my passion all through school and everything. It was just drums. Just drums, yeah. I mean, I, I started writing toward the end of high school, but nothing that, that led me to believe I would be a writer. <laughs> like most musicians, Randall knew he wanted to play music for the rest of his life. And for most musicians, that means learning and knowing how to play other instruments. He picked the guitar up when he was 15. Graduating a year early from high school, Shreve decided to start pursuing music. He and his brother Benjamin Dilshree played together for seven years. It was during that time he says he really began to write. A lot. And after he and his brother parted ways to do their own thing, Randall infused himself into learning everything he could. I went into more production, uh, working with other bands and, and you know, uh, recording and producing other bands, other music. In doing that, I you know, had a studio all to myself at a lot of turns, and so I ended up uh, recording all the stuff in a way that I was happy, and so I released my first album then. His first album, The Cure for Yesterday, released in 2006 while he was living in Orlando, Florida. And like a lot of musicians over the years, Randall lived in several different places. So, from Orlando, it was bright lights and big city, baby, New York City, which is where he stayed for another couple years. While he was there, his music started taking a new form. As he was finding his sound, he realized that a trip to the circus with his dad had really made an impact on him many years earlier. There's this one day that my dad pulled me out of school, me and my older brother. To this day, I don't know what the purpose was other than he wanted us to see the, the circus had come to town and we parked as close as we could get to the whole thing being set up and we watched the guys like the like the railroad cars are pulled up they're not doing this in 18 wheelers they're doing this out of the train and so we're watching it all come off of there and we're watching guys hammering stakes and, and we watched the tent go up and and then this, on the same day we went to the airport like I don't, it was like a like I was in a make a wish sort of thing or something because he took us to the airport and I and I got in a small plane and went up for the first time and so it was just this it had to have been very impactful you know like it's I never would forget this day but the fact that the circus was involved with it and then we went to the circus that night and saw you know saw the circus for the first time so that probably planted a big seed and then just that feeling, wherever it comes from, that's always been there. Always been there when I sit down to write music, you know. That stuff is kind of natural to pull out. 
Fast forward to 2008 when he recorded his second album, The Entertainer. And according to his bio on his website, The Entertainer was the album that introduced fans to his quote, signature wine-soaked P.T. Barnum-esque swagger. Take a listen. All right, well, besides that one day that, as you can plainly see, had a lasting impression on him, what else and or who else influences this unique sound? When you talk about just the aesthetic, it's it's Charlie Chaplin, you know. I was just, uh, and am, but I, I went through a season of just absolutely being enamored with with everything he, he did. He kind of carried the torch from the beginning, like, we did things the way I want to do it, you know. He was so hands-on that he was writing the music for his films, you know. He was he was writing the films, he was directing them, he was producing them. He, like, it, that's, uh, that, I think that's, that influenced me a lot, you know. And not, not just aesthetically, but, but like, how, how I would want to do business, you know. And, of course, the list goes on. We're talking Frank Sinatra, Perry Como, the great Satchmo, in case you don't know who that is, that's Louis Armstrong. But, with that being said... We weren't missing out on Pearl Jam, but we were making room for this old stuff that we had missed, you know, that kind of was getting overlooked at that time, it seemed. So there you go. Some of the influence that brings that... What is it? Ah, yes, that wine-soaked P.T. barnum swagger. Oh, and in case you didn't know, Randall is a huge Freddie Mercury and Queen fan. And yes, he also does a Queen tribute show. A year later is when Randall decided for yet another move to here in Northwest Arkansas. That's in 2009. And this has been his home since. So why NWA? Well, it was family and business. I had a lot of family move to this area, so it was kind of like, um, you know, I, I, I guess I reached the age of like re-entry into the family of origin and, and was just kind of wanting to not feel so nomadic, you know, wanting to feel a little more rooted and, and that was primarily the reason. His brother, Benjamin Del Shreve, had also been in the area for a few years and had established himself musically as well. Randall says it just made sense from a business standpoint to come here. And whenever I got here, suddenly the shows were much easier to connect because everything was more concentrated here. So we would go through, you know, we'd spend a day driving across Pennsylvania and then play a couple spots in Ohio and, you know, and then like hustle down here and then it was all wide open. There's just, everything was around here. So from a business standpoint, it seemed like a wise decision. And after Randall moved here, it would be 2011 when he put his third album out, The Jester. In 2013, Shree released Lover's Lies and Butcher Knives. And two years later, after that, in 2015, he released The Devil and The End. Although Randall's been doing the solo thing for quite some time, he says he prefers to play with a band. But playing solo allows him to make a living at it. Really, the solo show is the most efficient way to play music full time for me. You know, like I can make a living playing solo because I don't have any overhead. And so I figured out how to make that work and hopefully how to make it work, you know, with longevity. Longevity? So far, so good. He's been playing music full time for the past eight years. And his new album, Excessively Refined, he's doing that with the DeVilles. As I mentioned a minute ago, he prefers playing with a band. Ideally, I would play with the band every night. Oh. And that's, that's who the DeVilles are. I wrote the new album. I was the primary you know, person with the vision for it. But bringing them in starts letting me hear, OK, this is how it's going to fly live and, and improve. You know, This is how like my, my initial idea, the DeVilles will come along and turn it into like what, what works live. And what works live? Well, I'd say he knows what works live. I mean, besides, he has fans from all over. We were living in Ohio. Uh, we had been following him uh, on MySpace. And not long after that, Candace went to a show in Pennsylvania where Randall was playing and met him. And from there, she said she started following his career and eventually just became friends with the guy. In fact, it was a show she went to at George's to watch Randall perform several years back when she said she fell in love with the area and decided to actually move here. And the new friend she made? 
I just got recently diagnosed with uh, metastatic breast cancer. Uh, he's done three big benefits for me. His friendship means the world to me. Candy says she tries to go to his shows as often as possible, and of course, she's excited about the new album, especially the song Lost Boys. I weep every time, almost every time that I hear that song. And speaking of, the new album has 11 tracks, down from 50, Randall says, and will be released not only digitally, but on vinyl as well, with an extended release later that will have four additional tracks. Randall says that he feels that this is the album he's communicated the most clearly on. I feel like, well, I know this is the most well-rounded I've ever expressed myself. I'm communicating from a much larger spectrum of my emotions, of myself. You know, it's not just, here's the song where I'm angry, and here's the song where I'm sad, and you know, it's like, I feel like I've communicated better than I ever have. And something else on this album? Vulnerability. This is the first one that I've done uh, since going to therapy. You <laughs> know, in that seven years, I, I, I spent a lot of time in therapy and, and, you know, getting my mental health right. I feel like that can be heard and felt, you know, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud that, that it is uh, more purely me than I think any of them have been. And like many artists, Randall says a lot of what drove his writing was, of course, turmoil. He said he was even scared at one point to get well, as he put it, because he didn't know if it would affect his writing in a bad way. But it was a fellow musician and friend that convinced him to start therapy, which did the opposite in his writing than what originally scared him away from therapy. And I said, but like, do you think it will like, mess up the writing? And he was just like, how's the writing going? <laughs> and I was just like, man, yeah. Because like, I'm really kind of struggling because I'm having to fight off, you know, I'm, I, like, I'm having to fight off a lot of distraction just from, from internal things. And, and so uh, I made moves and, and made some corrections to my path that, that led to a healthier way to write, you know. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. You know, there's no, there's no, it didn't block anything. It opened, it opened up new things. And speaking of opening up things, how about this scene? Our scene? the local music scene across five country. So I asked him what he likes or doesn't like about the local music scene and what he would like to see. And I feel like we've got, we've got a really good opportunity to, to grow, especially right now. You know, there's a, lot, uh, there's a lot of energy in this area and there's a lot of talent in the area. What I'd like to see is artists, sporting artists more, you know, uh, lifting each other up. And there have been so few stages in the area that it seems like for a little while there just wasn't enough opportunity for everybody. It seems like venues are starting to you know rebrand re or show up that that want you know want good for the music scene and I just think the most important thing for a music scene is is that the artists support each other take care of each other and and look for you know you, you're, you're naturally going to find what works best for you, but I think that it's important to always look, look to your left and right to see you know, who you can take with you and, and how. If one of us wins, you know, the whole scene wins, but if one of us wins and brings a few you know, up somehow, then, then the scene wins faster. So I just think that, that we, can, we can always do better at that. Lifting each other up, it's a good concept. I think every music scene needs that, lifting each other up. In fact, we should probably be lifting each other up, regardless if we're playing music or not. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randall Shreve. That does it for this segment. Don't forget, new album, Excessively Refined, dropped June 9th. Until next time, make sure, keep lifting each other up, and shine the spotlight on Five Country. See y'all.